Ladies and gents, what's up? This is BC. Uh, we're doing another episode of Supreme Being, another interview series. We have a familiar face, Brett, who I think I originally interviewed him. Was it about two years ago now? Maybe a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, it was yeah, about two. Two, maybe a little bit more, right when I had moved to Miami. He's been a Team BC member since inception, pretty much. I think he's one of the first people yeah. um, that we opened up with. He's still here doing his thing, and I wanted to bring him on because it's been, it's been some time, and many of you have been asking about it. So, uh, wise guy. How you doing? What's going on? Yeah, Thank man. Good to have you, bro. Uh, so just give us an update, bro. I know we, we talked last time a little bit more about your story, but you know, the last two years, like what does your business look like? What does life look like? What have you changed? What stayed yeah. the same? You know, what's what's kind of been going on in your world? Jeez. Yeah, so so a lot has changed, <laughs> obviously, but yeah. at the same time, the fundamentals still ring true. A lot of the things uh -huh. that you preach and talk about all the time that everyone wants to overlook with waking up, following your schedule, doing the calls, yeah. and just staying on it. It's really just refining that exact same process that I've been doing mm. this entire time. And yeah. the cool thing is it only gets richer and richer and richer. And there's periods of time where I was, when I first started out my first year, I was going through all that same thing, following that same schedule yeah. and it gets monotonous, yeah. you know, it gets yeah. extremely boring. And there's like most days it's like pulling teeth, trying to get out of bed and like, go do the shit yeah. that you got to do. Right. And I struggle with that a lot. And I think I came to you a couple of times saying like, yeah. Dude, like, when is a time to say, like, maybe this fucking shit isn't for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, at what point do I turn and say, all right, you know, maybe real estate, I'm, I'm seeing some sort of success, but I'm just, like, unfulfilled and I'm not happy. Mm. At what point do you pull the plug and say, all right, I'm going to try something else now, Yeah. yeah. right? Because, it, I mean, I know people, there's been people that have been on, involved with us that they've went off and done their own thing, yeah, yeah. right? And whether that was the right decision or the wrong one, yeah. that's their personal choice to make. But you kept kind of pushing me on to say, just hang in, keep going, do this, make these changes, make those changes. And I think what you were trying to tell me was something that is hard to be put into words. And it's something that the individual needs to experience, Yeah, which is like learning to like the daily things that you're doing already. Because the fact of the matter is, yeah. even if you have a shitload of fucking money, you have all the success, you have the deals going on, you're going to wake up and do almost the same shit, just in a different form. Yep. Really? So like, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference and, and we want to get out of that position that we're in. Yeah. Right. And that's good. Yeah. But it's just channeling that. So, so through the years of doing the same things that I've, mm -hmm. I've been doing, I've refined my process. And now I wake up every day, like excited, like really, yeah. really yeah. excited. And, yeah. and I got that right when I got into the business, I was like super fired up because I yeah. started doing the math with like the commission, yeah. seeing how much I can make. And I was super fired up about that. Yeah. And I woke up super excited, but eventually that kind of came off and I fell into like a lull with yeah. my energy. But since um, since I've been on it and doing my things again, it's just been it's been great. Like yeah. I wake up excited every day to, yeah. to do the same thing. Now you organically brought it up, and that was going to be one of the first questions I was going to ask you because yeah. I think everybody hits that point. Um, now the reason I brought that up with Brett and and we're talking about it, I just think you know the way he handled it is proper. What most people will do that I experience is they never really even commit to the process like you did. They never really see any success. Um, so that's why with most people, the advice that I give them is different because I tell them you haven't even given it an honest shot and mm -hmm. seen any results. Because one of the first things I tell them is if I snap my fingers and you have 10 pending deals, would you still consider leaving? They're like, oh, no. I'm like, then it's not your fulfillment. You just aren't doing any fucking yeah, deals. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. But with you, you're actually making money. And I remember you coming to me and I was like, OK, this makes sense because we all hit that crossroads eventually. So mm. um, if we explore that a little bit. What were maybe some of the first kind of, uh, after our initial conversations, what were the, if you can break it down maybe into steps, what were the mm. first maybe signs of light that you started to see and kind of experiences you made that transition from being like completely unfulfilled now to being fired up? Sure. Um, so, so it was number one, realizing that there's these obstacles that are in front of you. You had to deal with them. Yeah. I'm going to have to deal with them. There's yeah. some that I'm still going to have to deal with. There's some that you're still going to have to deal with. Right. Yeah. And you know that, and I know that. And it's things where as long as you keep walking that path and getting up every day and putting one foot in front of the other, yeah. it's, it's a matter of chipping away at it. And yeah. oftentimes we get impatient and it, it's, it takes a lot of like analyzing of yourself to yeah. realize like I'm being really fucking impatient. Like what you just said, people don't even give it an honest shot. They don't knock on one door. They make a hundred calls a day for three months and they're like, what the fuck, you yeah. know? I should be making millions by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah. and, and part of that, maybe it's ignorance or maybe yeah. it's impatience. Maybe it's a mixture of both. And oftentimes mm -hmm. I think it is. 
Um, it, it, it's just realizing like, hey, I'm going to have to deal with these things and I can attack them mm -hmm. with energy, maximum energy and maximum output and chop these bushes down. Or I can walk and beat around the bush and feel like shit and not right. actually do what I wanted to do. Right, right. And at the end of the day, you, you, you can walk that path. Like it doesn't affect me. It doesn't yeah. affect you if people decide to walk that path. Yeah. But we've all been there to some degree and we all know when we're not giving it an honest effort and it feels like yeah. fucking shit. Yeah. And it really, really does. And that's when I was just talking about previously, I, I mentioned that like lull that I was in. Yeah. It was fucking that. And like put business aside and your success aside and all that stuff. Just saying you're going to do something and then not fucking doing it does not fucking feel good. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. And, yep. and the more you put current, like say like, Hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to follow my schedule. And then you don't fucking do it. <laughs> it just gets fucking worse yep. and worse and worse. 100%. And it gets heavier and heavier until like, there's people that have been in this program that they like wash away. And then there's yeah. people that have been in the program probably longer than I have that are still doing the same fucking shit. Yeah. You know? And, and it fucking sucks. And like, I, more than anything, it's, a, it's almost like, like I feel bad for that person because they're in their own fucking way and they just can't get out of their own way. So really it was realizing that and saying, all right, I'm going to have to deal with this shit one way or another. I can get out of real estate today. I can go in. It was construction and construction yeah. management. I was going to yeah. go into, I can go do that. It's the same fucking shit, but in my opinion, it's even worse because now yeah. you got bosses and like my girlfriend works a full-time job. It fucking like, she's never home. Yeah. She, she doesn't make that good of money. I can work yeah. six hours throughout a month with yeah. two listings yeah. and make twice of what she makes. Yep. You know what I mean? And in the beginning, it takes a lot of, of putting it all together. And, and that's why you preach going door to door and making the calls and doing that every day, because those are the things that can really mold you to where you don't have to prepare and set the appointment for the next day to get ready and mentally prepare and get all your paper. Like you're just fucking ready. Like, are yep. you ready now? Yeah. Right now? Like you could just sign some shit right now. Yep. And with that comes confidence and conviction. So basically all these issues that I have been working through, they ended up working themselves out when I stopped focusing on the issue and just said, all right, I'm going to continue to do these things. Mm -hmm. And and I have to trust this for at least a period of time when maybe there is no faith. Yeah. You know, all you have is saying, hey, I'm going to do this for myself, right? I'm not going to do it for the deals. I'm not going to do it for the money. I'm not going to do it to help other people or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. I'm going to do it for myself because I feel like fucking shit saying I'm going to do these things and then not doing it. Yep. Right. So once I started doing that, that's really when things started to pile on top of each other. And I started to build momentum with like the daily thing. And yeah. by the way, this momentum is aside from your deals and the calls yeah. you're making. It's, it's momentum that you have getting up every day, committing to a process and doing it every yeah. single day, because that's exactly what's needed in entrepreneurship to, to like make it. Because mm -hmm. there's so many times where you're working, you're working, you're pedaling. It's like riding a fucking, what are those bikes called? The fucking uh, Pelotons, right? Yeah. It's fucking pedaling and pedaling and pedaling, but you're not getting anywhere. Yep. But the progress is adding up and it's stacking up. Yep. And it, it's over the weeks and over the years mm -hmm. that things will eventually work themselves out and, and stack up, but it's not going to happen on its own. Yeah. Like you it's, have to. It's like it. that, that, that curve. It goes, Yoom! and then you have the success or you have the breakthrough moment and people th associate that line with a shit ton of money when yeah. like yeah. what you're describing is an internal process, right? Because when I, um, like, as you're listening, I remember when I got in, I went from basketball to real estate. Like, of course, identity crisis, like what the fuck I'm wearing a suit now. I got to go to the office. I got to fucking talk to people and make phone calls. Like for me, I, again, I had that. Well, this isn't me. Because what's the first thing people say when you tell them, hey, do these basics and get a script? Well, oh, not that kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that's too salesy, bro. Like, yeah. that's just not yeah. me, yeah. you know. But all that is, is that internal kind of you hold on to that identity. But you literally said, I want to get into real estate and change my life. Therefore, you will have to change. That old paradigm has to shatter and the new person yeah. needs to emerge. Yeah. And in that process, it's not pretty. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. And at times you feel lost because you have nothing to fall back on and identify with. You're in the process of being reforced. It's like the blacksmith, ching, yeah. ching. It's a hunk of hot metal until he fucking cools it off and pulls it out. And it's that shiny sword that can yeah. cut a motherfucker's head off. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yep. But uh, talk to the metal. Oh, it burns. Oh, this yeah, sucks. Yeah, then yeah. at the end, he's like, fuck yeah, I'll slice anybody's yep, head off. Exactly. You know what I mean? Is that kind of exactly. like a good I mean, description? You just hit the nail on the head. Yeah. It's, it's I want to change my life. Right. Yep. Before it was, I'm going to get into real estate to change my life. But yeah. you want to change your life. That's the fucking yeah. goal. Right. right. The goal is not to get into real estate. The goal is to use real estate as a vehicle to change your life. Yeah. And it's a perfect thing to do so. So 
the key thing is changing and the changing is not going to be easy. So you can quit on real estate. You can go to fucking try wholesaling or try this other shit. Right. Yeah. And you could be successful at that. You know, for some people, like I said, it's a smart move for other. It's not, but mm. just know that you're going to have to do the same shit. Yeah. It's the same fucking shit. So it's like, yeah, avoid not knocking on a door or avoid not talking on a phone, but you're going to have to confront your boss or you're going to have to like give up and sacrifice all this other shit that is valuable, which is yeah. your time, your schedules, your routines. Like yeah. I have a schedule and routine where I can wake up, I can go for a walk at 12 fucking noon and get sun and I, I can go do my thing as long as all my shit is done. Yep. You go work a job, all that goes away, yep. you know? And and then your your earnings capped, like, like yeah. fucking believe me, I've, I've looked into it. <laughs> it's yeah. not, it's not like it, real estate is really just hard to beat, right? Especially just like the agent rule. Yeah. Like it's really hard to beat. And I, I think that's like, what you were trying to tell me, but if you told me that directly when I was a little bit more ignorant, and I, I don't think I would have understood. Yeah. And I would have said, no, like it was for him, but it's not for me. You yeah. know what I mean? And right, I would have right. said some shit and talked myself out of it. So of course. I'm glad I didn't. So thank you for Yeah, of course, bro. Of course. You know, and and you know, when I when I look at this thing too from like a more objective perspective and we go like philosophical on it, one thing that we hear about in life is like the midlife crisis, right? But yeah. when we analyze that deeper, what that what I have experienced and what I've learned from observing other people and myself is no matter which route you were to choose, let's say he did get out of real estate or he did it, you always at some point have the thought of what if, right? And that's what really is is the heart of this issue. But that's just us as human beings, mm -hmm. right? You chose left. You're like, well, what if I went right? And then mm -hmm. if you went right, well, what if I went left? You will hit that point at some you know uh, stretch of your journey. But see, that's just our genuine curiosity as human beings. It's not a red flag. And a lot of times when we have that moment, whenever it falls for somebody, there's this flight or fight response, like fight or flight, yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, like, uh, well, shit, maybe I should have done that. It's like, no, nah, dude, it, it's it, everybody goes through that, right? And understanding that and experiencing it myself, I was like, no wonder, dude, like now I can, I can approach these things and these crises, right, with calm and be like, okay, this is a normal part of the human existence, right? Sure. Now that takes a lot more mental maturity to understand and process and then actually live through. But, you know, it's a point I wanted to add because I think a lot of people, and maybe you experience that as well uh, from a career standpoint, everybody goes through that, right? Yeah. The what if, and you even explored, you said, looking at jobs yeah, and stuff, right? Yep. So you'll actually look into it thinking, oh, this is what I want, when in reality it wasn't, Yeah. right? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's literally, it's like it's like a fishing lure. You know, yeah, you get lured yeah. in and it looks real and yeah, it's moving yeah. like it's real, and then you right. fucking bite it and you're like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And, and like what you just mentioned is like the philosophy side of it. Like yeah. I also think that there's like a faith side of it. Like you have to have faith, and I'm not talking about religion, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. not religious. I don't think you're religious, yeah. but it's like whatever you believe in or believing in yourself or the universe, whatever the fuck that is, you need to have <laughs> faith that like the shit's going to work out, that these yeah. answers are going to come to you. But that shit will only work. Everyone wants to talk about like manifesting and doing yeah, all the law shit, of attraction. Yeah. Like none of that shit is fucking real unless you're actually doing something. Yeah, right? right. All that really is, is you're taking the actions in order to see the opportunities and seize the opportunities and succeed on top of those opportunities. And if you're not working, you're not going to get a fucking opportunity no. because, for example, even if you suck at cold calling, if you make enough dials, you're going to get deals. Yep. You can at least get – if you're making 500 dials a day, 2,500 a week, and you do that four weeks out of the month, you're going to get one deal because yeah. there's agents. Like if you're an agent and you don't have confidence and that's why you don't cold call or that's why you don't do enough, go to a fucking open house. Yeah. And go look at your competition. Go look at the people that are there. It's yeah. like, it's, it's fucking it's a surprise that game. they're even alive. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, dude, this fucking guy is selling this house. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Right. And granted some agents like step in shit and they just like know the person and they have yeah. no idea what they're doing, but right, right. like <laughs> you can absolutely take advantage of those mm. opportunities and it's low hanging fruit. And that's not just hundred thousand mm. dollar like shitholes. Right. Five, seven hundred thousand, a million dollar homes yeah. where agents don't know what the fuck they are doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? How many times do we hear it where it's like an agent's first deal and it's like a million dollars? Yeah. I've been I've gone to three, five million dollar developments and the person there, I'm like, Did, can this guy even give me the answer to two plus two? You he know doesn't what I mean? even like, know he's working. Yeah. Right. It's like you ask him a question about the house. Hold on, let me check. Hold on. Yeah. It's like, bro, you don't know shit. Like yeah, you're supposed yeah. to know everything, right? Yeah. And it's like it blows my mind. And 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 even to what Brett was saying. Right. Like if you, again, marry yourself to the process, if we're going to use that word, you know, just out of sheer, we can say 
resilience as a human being, meaning you're do, you're going to do a task. And if you know you're going to continue to do it, you naturally will want to get better at it. If you make the calls, like he said, you'll be like, man, I'm tired of getting my ass kicked on the phone. I need to figure out how to handle that objection about being young or where my office is. Again, you will evolve and figure it out. Why? Because there isn't the option of, well, I'm just not going to call anymore. Right. When you marry to the process, again, you will develop and grow. Mm -hmm. Right. Just being exposed to it and doing it, we naturally want to get better and we will get better. That's mm -hmm. how we are as human beings. Right. But if you always pull the plug and you always have the plan B and C and, you know, the out, you're never going to do it. Yeah. Right. And when you take that away, that's when the ingenuity kicks in. Right. And then all our creative juices and going back to even me fucking in my shithole apartment back in the day. Right. <laughs> all the all the crap. And and you know the chicken glop that I would have on the fucking <laughs> on the board, all that was was me out there getting my ass kicked, bro. And I was like, I need to come up with better objection handlers. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like the smoothies yeah. from Smoothie King, right? Just this glop of shit, right? That's on the board. And and I'm like, dude, I, I I need to increase my closing rate. I need to get past this wall because if I don't, well, shit, then I'm gonna lose business. And the ingenuity kicks in. And you're going to feel like shit. Yeah. Not, and it sucks. Yeah. It, sucks it sucks to go out there and get your ass kicked to be like, damn, I tried this line that I came up with a hundred times thinking I'm a fucking wise guy and this shit was horrible, right? <laughs> yeah. Like it was garbage. It was just <laughs> yeah. absolute shit, you know? But again, I never had the option of quitting because I knew if I quit, I'll, I'll never forget about this for the rest of my life and I'll be miserable. Even if I get another job that maybe I like and it's okay, I'll always say I was a pussy and I didn't go through with what I said I wanted to do, mm -hmm. right? And you brought it up at the beginning. When you go against your own word, I've told this to everybody. I said it's a sacred contract that cannot be broken. And when you do, you turn into every other person during New Year's. I'm going to lose weight. And their own voice is like, shut up, you fat every fuck. You're not going to lose any weight. Exactly. Every right. Year. And they yeah. never do it. And then all you're doing is building the muscle in the opposite way to where your word, its weight is of a feather. Yeah. I want your, your word to be the weight of gold. Meaning like, like Brett as an example, right? If I told him something he would 100% already know that I'm going to fulfill what I said yeah. or that I'm going to do it. Hey, I'm going to be up at your place at 2. Yeah. He know like if I'm not there at 2, he's going to be like, "Oh shit, maybe he got hit by a fucking meteor yeah, okay? or something." Yeah, right. Like, you know, cuz this dude when he says he's going to do something, he does it versus the average person, you're like, "He said 2, he'll be here at fucking 3 or I, I don't even know if he'll show up." Yeah. Right? It's, it's the same thing, man. Yeah. It's crazy. So, what I would say in the last two years, man, because that shift that you're describing is, is huge. And I really hope that people paid attention to that because they, they're probably in that process or they will hit that point, at, you know, at some leg of their journey. Right. You know, what adjustments have you made within the business? How did you find joy in those like deepest, darkest moments in your daily activities? And once you made it over that hump, maybe from like a mechanical standpoint on how you run your business, what shifted? Yeah. Right. So is really when, which one you want me to answer first? Cause it's going to dictate either where one, I go. Either one, either one, man. Um, all right. So, so mechanically what I started doing is, is I'm like, all right, well, I might as well, if I'm going to be doing this shit, no matter what it is, whether, whatever endeavor you're, you're in, I'm going to set myself up for success. We can tell you're the son of a New Yorker, by the way, if I'm going to do this shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this, this <laughs> fucking shit. Right? Um, so if, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to set myself up for success. Why would you set yourself up mm -hmm. in an environment around people and without resources to do something that's already hard as fuck? Because yeah. let's just face it, it's fucking hard and it's not yeah. going to be easy. Yeah. And if it's easy for a little bit, fucking don't get comfortable because it's going to get hard again. Yep. Right. Yep. So I basically looked at it and I said, all right, how can I set myself up for success every day? Right. And whatever that is, that's prepping your clothes and making a schedule. And this is the shit that people do every time on new year's and, and mm -hmm. they end up not fucking following through, but this is like step one and it's the basis, right? First is the faith and understanding. All right, I'm going to commit myself for this. And whether it's for a one year, a two year, a three year, if, you're an agent and you don't want to commit indefinitely. You don't want to be an agent forever. That's fine. Mm. Commit hard as fuck for three, five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like say, I'm going to do this. Otherwise you're just not going to get results. So that's number one. And having the faith that like, all right, I'm going to go to this person. I'm going to go to Brian because he's the one that can teach me and show me mm. what the fuck I need to do. Yeah. Right. Because fact of the matter is you don't need somebody to hold your hand and walk you through everything. That's not what you need. Right. And that's exactly why you don't do that shit yeah. because you're doing a disservice to that person by helping them because they can never swim on their own. Yeah. So you can, you can do this. However, getting on a coaching program and getting around people and getting the resources that you need is just going to fast track your results. Yeah. Right. And if the shit sucks, 
might as well, like I said, make it easier for yourself. And at that so, point, you're in a way, you're volunteering yourself. You're putting yourself in that environment now where you had to take a step, sign up, show up, where it's like, okay, now you're forcing yourself to be held accountable too. And it's tangible. And it's exactly. Real. It's yeah. a real, you know, like they say, you put skin in the game. Yeah. And a lot of people won't do that, right? That way they always have their, their hand on the doorknob to take the exit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when you do that, you take your hand off of it and you fully come in. You're like, okay, come, come my yeah, son. Exactly. We're here in the yep. Agagi now. We're going to shave your head, <laughs> yeah. whip you and fucking... You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but that that's exactly it. It's like fully committing, right? Yeah. The, the term like burning the boats, like there make it go. to the fucking island, burn the boats, and you're not going back, right. at least for a temporary time, right? It's not indefinite. People are scared to commit. So commit first. Set yourself up for success. Get around the people that you need to get around and build the habits and the structures because the habits are going to be the building blocks of your life mm-hmm. as long as you go. Yeah. There's still habits that you've had since your first year in the business that you still do to this fucking day because they work. Yep. There is no magic pill. There's not, it's not like Brian's doing fucking cold plunges and that's why he shows up every day now. Like he's fucking <laughs> doing the same shit. Like people, people videotaping themselves in cold tubs of water. Like give me a fucking break, you know? Like yeah. you do the, do the things that can set yourself up for success. Get around the people, get the resources. And the things that you told me to do that, that I still do to this day is I wake up at an early time, right? Yeah. No later than six o'clock most mornings. Yeah. I make sure I read, I get some form of exercise or stretching in, and I take a cold shower every single fucking morning. It doesn't have to be that for everybody. It can be whatever they want. But I know when I do that in the morning time is my time to prime myself for my day and set myself up for success. And if I don't do that, I don't want to say marry that routine and that schedule. Let that be a great foundation. And it's like a pregame warm up. You do it every day yep. before you get into your thing. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you want to have the flexibility and the fluidness to say, all right, I'm traveling and the sun's not out. So I can't sun gaze or uh, I forgot my book or whatever the fuck it is to say, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this change yeah. and it's still going to work out. Yeah. The whole right? point of that too is to demonstrate mastery over a basic fundamental. You don't have to marry that process like he just mentioned. And I, I want to make that point because I don't follow the exact same schedule I used to, right? I'm not sitting there in front of the mirror doing the, in, the affirmations <laughs> and incantations like I used to, but I demonstrated absolute mastery of that, doing it day in and day out for years, for years. So now I can pick and choose. But what most people will do, like we mentioned earlier, is they'll do it once or twice and they can't even have a basic discipline to wake up at a certain time. Like if you can't do that, how the fuck are you going to cold call consistently? Or have faith that you're going to make this shit work. There we go. Dude. That's why you don't fucking it's do crazy. it. Yeah. Because yeah. you're breaking your own work. And, and, yeah. and that's where it starts. Like you have to fucking commit to something at some point. Like if you want to change your life, you have to commit to something, yeah. right? Money aside and everything else, like I keep saying, if it's if it's losing weight, you have to commit to losing weight. You can't do it for three days and then eat fucking bonbons on the couch, right? Like, I don't even know what a fucking bonbon is, to be honest. <laughs> but it's it's committing to that and getting the resources. So set yourself up for success. Number two is I knew that there are certain aspects in real estate that I just simply don't fucking like. Now, does it mean I never do them? No. But does it mean that's something I focus on? Not necessarily. When I do focus on it, I focus on it as a challenge. So it's like, I always relate this to how you said, like, you hated working with buyers at yeah. the beginning. Like, you, you couldn't fucking stand it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, who fucking Still cat, true right? to this day, yeah. for the most part. Yeah, for all my too. friends that have bought, I love you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so it's like, you would probably work, if I had to guess, right? You would work with buyers as a challenge to yourself. Yeah. Right? So you'd say, all right, I hate doing this. Let's see how fucking good I can do it. Yep. And if you can commit to something like that and get really good at doing something you hate, there's literally nothing that you can't do. Yeah, right. You know, then it'd be fucking dangerous if there was something that you really like that you got a hold of because yeah. everyone else is fucked. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So um, what I did is is I kept mentioning to you, I'm like, I want to work with investors. I want to work with investors. But of course, I wasn't fucking cold calling investors. I wasn't cold calling absentees. So I wasn't getting yeah, that. Yeah. And, and I think that's why that process for me was a little bit strung out is because I wasn't fucking changing. I was doing the same thing. So, um, that was one thing that I decided to change. I still work with normal buyers. I still work with normal sellers. Some buyers are for I'll be honest. Um, but I mainly focus on absentee owners and I focus on high equity properties that are vacant. I focus on homes that are distressed. I focus on people that are in financial distress situation, divorced. Um, and those are the people like, Like I work so hard on myself for myself, but then what follows that is now I can provide everybody else with this great service of what 
this yep. this fucking sword that I just mm-hmm. made, I can now provide it to somebody else and help yeah. them. And they're in a shitty position yeah. and I can help them yeah. out of that. So um, that's the, the thing that really kind of fulfilled it for me. I don't have like, I'm going to be honest, I don't have like a burning desire and passion to help someone find their dream uh, home or something. You pivoted, bro. It's you, cool. You, you but, went towards, you looked at the industry and said, okay, I'm staying in. What do I like? And you found the investor route and, and that's what you chose. So, yeah. so within that, you still applied the principles and did it, but now you're focusing on something you do enjoy in the business versus just the generic approach. Yeah. It's basically yeah. what it was. Exactly. And then yeah. having the reasoning to do that, like, and, and my mind just, it's like spinning right now because I'm thinking of, of all these things. And this is what like this topic does to me. And I know yeah. there's like, there's energy in this. So like, I'm going to follow it and I'm going to use my processes and my resources and go after this thing. So yeah. I knew that most investors that get into the business, they don't buy one home. They don't buy two. They buy multiple, right? Yeah. Especially if they're flippers, you can have one solid flipper. There's agents that I know now that they have two or three flippers that they work with. And they do seven deals a month yeah. of two or three people, yeah. right? Now, I don't think I would solely rely on these two or three people to pay my bills, right? But yeah. like, shit, you supplement in that with some expired calls or something else, like, you know? And then on top of that, like, like the reason why I'm walking everyone through this is to stack everything, what goes on in my mind with my reasoning, where I wake up and I'm like, all right, let's fucking do this every day. Yeah. yeah. So investors are going to continue to grow. And we know this. We know that investors will continue to buy real estate. Yep, yep. We know it's a good investment and shit. Most of the real estate agents that get in the business, they're getting in because they want to be investors, but they yep. have no money. Their pockets are inside out. So they're going to become an agent. They're going to make money and then they're going to invest. That's exactly why I got in. So I'm like, all right, I want to learn about investment properties. Why not cold call these people and learn through doing it yeah. and seeing the inner workings? Because the cool thing is with a lot of the investors I work with now, they're not, I don't work with a ton, but I work with a couple that are like heavy hitters mm. and there's things, it's almost like a partnership that kind of goes on. Right. Yeah. And, and he respects my professionalism and what I do, which is marketing, selling and doing that sort of thing. But he knows a lot of things that I just never knew. Right. Like yeah. certain tax codes and certain loopholes and things that now I can take from this guy and take it over to this guy and be like, Hey, check it out. And now boom, there's your unique value proposition where you could say, Hey, I'm a man of my word and I can do this and I can do that. But at the same time, I have all these tools I can bring to the table to help you get what Mm -hmm. you want to do. So what I've done is through building my database, through door knocking random doors, through calling expires, through doing all that, I'm continuing to build that with absentee owners and, and things of that sort. But the, the main focus now is working that database and, and pulling investors out of there because mm-hmm. all those people are homeowners. If you've owned a home more than five years, you have equity in it. Yep. Did you know you can pull money out, even if it's 20, 30, 40, 50 grand, buy a property that pays its debt and more? Yep. And then that's going to go up in equity and you can do that again. And what will happen again, again, again in five years with that new one? You'll have equity, right? Boom. And then, so oh, yeah. help other people and build your own pipeline yeah. because like, and that's just consumers. There's yep. also agents that want to do this shit. So I'm an agent, right? your coaching program, I'm in distinguished agent. There's other agents in there. If I'm working with investors and investment properties, shit, what if those, any of those agents that are in DA and they want to, they live in California or Washington or, and they want to invest in Florida, who's the guy to reach it? Yep. There you go. You know, so like, it's not, you can get transactions everywhere you go by doing this. So in my mind, I'm like, this is, this is like perfect. And Makes I love sense. it. Makes sense. You know, so yeah. I like geek out about it. I read about it now. And it's like, I just feel like I'm on a on a good solid path to mm. build the life that I want for myself in the process of helping a lot of people and basically creating just a pool of of money and relationships. There you go. You know? Love it, man. A um, couple, couple things I, I want to pull from that, right? And this is going to be kind of like a not related to what you said directly, but it will feed on one of the points you mentioned. I don't like buyers. <laughs> would, would you be cool talking about that one dude that you had as a buyer? Remember that would nitpick everything? Because I uh, think the that, would, the that, mail? That, that would be a great story. The yeah, the, the mail. mail. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and then maybe from that story, because I think it's hilarious and you guys will like it, maybe highlight some of the things that you overlooked or maybe you didn't follow your process properly and it kind of got you caught up with this guy. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> I didn't, frankly, <laughs> frankly, I didn't have a lot of money when this was happening, right? I think I had like, I had like one deal closed like two months before this and I was actually, the way I got this lead, I was door knocking. Yeah. And this was like a, a one and a half million dollar house. Yeah. And the lady was like super receptive and went mm-hmm. super great. Yeah. Um, I was following up with her a few months after, just 
doing my like normal check-in saying, Hey, are you taking care of? You need anything? It's like, Hey, I actually have a friend that's going to be buying a condo. So like, could, could you help him out? I'm like, dude, I'm like rubbing my hands together because like, this is a half, one and a half million dollar house on the water. And giving you a referral. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Cause those wealthy people go to these events and like, this is going to be great. She sends me this guy. I can't remember his name. Um, but I, I remember I normally never show people and you tell me like, don't show people stuff unless you have a pre- proof of funds or a pre-approval. Otherwise you're wasting your fucking time. Right. Yeah. And I don't know who I spoke to. I spoke to somebody else. Somebody else is in my ear and they're like, Oh, well show them like one or two homes. And if they don't get it, then, then you can, you know, yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay. That sounds like a good idea. And it right? creeped in that potential because you said you weren't making money. So a moment of weakness Exactly. You listen to that other voice instead of sticking to the yeah. plan. And and your faith, right? Like yeah. you have to have the fucking like Yeah. Brian knows what the fuck he's doing. Just fucking listen to him and, yeah. and do what he does, right? So um I, I went and I showed him. I ended up showing him like I think five places, right? Because I was hopeful. I was was that positive. all like in one day or like a couple it was days? Like two different days, okay, two different, cool. you know, and um hands in his pockets throughout the showing, just kind of like kicking around the house and i was like this guy doesn't seem very motivated but maybe it's like his demeanor it was like yeah. hard for me to read him right yeah. he had like these big big glasses to his eyes <laughs> fucking you could see into the future <laughs> yeah, <dude>. so <laughs> it was um like i'm like maybe this guy's just quirky and weird you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. it's hard to read he's eccentric yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's eccentric <laughs> and um yeah so basically when i knew i'm like this is fucking there was a couple signs that i was getting like that that i wasn't trusting my intuition i kept going along with it right yep, yep. because i needed the fucking money so i was like nah, and i talked myself into to continue doing it so instead of making calls i'm in like riviera beach or some shit showing this guy like condos and um we look at one and i did brian i did a fucking rock star job he's like what do you want so the two things that i did do i didn't get a proof of funds of pre-approval but i knocked everything off the list i'm like what do you want? How many beds? How many baths? Like, what's your style? What's this? Every fucking yeah, thing. Any deal breaker. Yeah. Yes. Like everything. Must haves. Yeah. Pre-qualified yeah. to the fucking max besides the most important thing, which is yeah. his money. Yeah. And I found this house that had the style he wanted, the square footage he wanted, the location in the building. Like, every single thing was perfect. It's a condo association, so the mailroom's downstairs, right? They don't deliver the mail to <laughs> fucking door. So... <laughs> we go downstairs to check out the mail room and um he goes huh and, and the mail guy's like oh yeah this is the mail room and like this is that and there's some packages on the table right and uh and, or like on the bench and he goes yeah this is and the mail guy's like oh you're moving in yada yada we're talking with the mail guy he's like yeah this is where you put we put your packages this is where you're gonna pick up all your mail my name's like uh ryan i'm Super the nice guy, guy. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And um, he's like, oh, there's no, there's no table in here. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? He was yeah. like, the boxes are on the floor and I have a bad back. And like, I can't sort my mail without a table. And for a second, like there was a moment of silence for like five or 10 seconds. I'm like, this guy's fucking with me. This fucking glasses on. I'm like, this is, there's no way. But he was dead stone serious. And that was the last time I ever worked with anyone without any type of financials or, or anything. And like then that. his thing was, I'm not going to move forward with that one only because, because there's, there's no table, table in the, in mail, the mail room. room. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the, the deal breaker for him. So, yeah, that was the last time I'm, I'm going to be doing that for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. I got tears, dude. So yeah. when he first told me this, I mean, we had the ongoing story and we have like a million inside jokes to it, like all the Adam Sandler movies and all that. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, I like bread. He's a good egg. Right. Yeah. Um, so when he was telling me this, right, I remember uh, I was probably relaying something like this is why you got to have the pre-approval and all that. Right. Yeah. But it's kind of cool that he went through it, too, because he learned it. Um, but. It really ties into what we were talking about. Marry the process and follow it no matter what. And when you veer from it, you get punished, right? When he looks back on it now, it's not cool to show at homes and do such a great job and then not get the result. It's no different than going to a listing appointment with somebody who's not qualified and walking out without it, right? It sucks. It weighs on you. And when that happens over and over and over and over, that's what causes people to doubt they're, you know, staying in the their business. Faith is their faith is withered away. Yeah. yeah. It's, but you didn't follow the process. Yeah. So it was justly withered away because you didn't fucking follow the process, dude. Yeah. So another thing yeah. I want to bring up, because I still to this day, I went live earlier before you came. And finally, the numbers are picking up after like six years of being censored, right? <laughs> finally. And they went up like 2%, right? <laughs> For now. And instead <laughs> of having five people on, I had eight, right? Yeah. <laughs> 50% growth, right? <laughs> Amazing. 
I'm, 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 it's unbelievable. And I think maybe because people like me and myself were not being pushed as much, I still get a lot of around the cold calling and door knocking. Does it work? Um, why should I do it? Is it the best method? So since you did it extensively, Brett, dude, Brett is like, if I was to put people like, you know, how you have employee of the month. If I was going to say distinguished agent of the month, he'd be up there multiple months in the last couple of years because he's really listened and applied a lot of the stuff. In, in the simplest terms, regardless of who's listening, could you give maybe some of the most beneficial things, not just for your business, but, but for your life, what door knocking and cold calling has done for you as a man and as a business person? Like just in, in yeah. the simplest way, not getting all esoteric and, oh, my God, yeah, and yeah, I saw yeah. God. No, but like really <laughs> practically in your practical everyday life, how has this really just changed things for you? Yeah. So so one thing you just said is as a man, like, especially as a fucking man, because like it, it goes to everybody. It goes, to, everything we're talking about is on an individual basis. Right. But especially men, like you, you're going to feel like fucking shit and it's going to be against your nature if you're not doing the things and keeping your word and doing that shit. Yeah. Right. So there was so many times and, and granted, I, I want to say that I door knocked for so long and I just closed the deal from a door knock like three years ago. Yeah. So I door knocked for so long and didn't get shit from it. You know what I mean? And then like fucking <laughs> straight up. And like for so long I'm like I'm like I know this is going to work. I like I get good responses. I'm following up with these people and they're just not fucking ready. Like these these yeah. leaders are not motivated, right? Yeah. Um but but it's it's a lot more than that. It's it's a lot more than just getting the business from it. Of course that's why you're doing it, but you're able to forge yourself into a person that like does not take shit, right? Yeah. So like I worked with that buyer which was after I door knocked, but I was just being stupid and foolish. And the reasons why I did that, I was desperate for fucking yeah. money. And that, that's why that happened most likely. But like, I'm able to, to knock on a door and ask difficult questions and ask and like, just refine my skills with everything. So now, yeah. no matter who I come across, whether they're very wealthy people, which against what everyone thinks are the nicest people and the most cordial people at their door, yeah. or if it's the neighborhoods that are like shithole homes, right? Like trap houses, I can get along with anybody and yeah. and they can feel like I'm trustworthy and I, I can get my myself across to them in a very mm. effective way. Yeah. And that in and of itself is I would argue one of the most valuable things that I, I have. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't, let's say I did go back and get a job. I would climb the rank so fucking fast because I know how to get on that boss's good side to have the employees to be able to, and it's not, it's not some hocus pocus, like manipulation type of thing. It's doing the right things and proving yourself and proving your worth and your intelligence to people. So they become raving fans about you. It's human nature. Right? Understanding of human nature. Yeah. That's take advantage is. of that shit. Yeah. Dude. Like, why would you not like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So like people, people don't want to follow scripts, like you said, and people don't want to do this stuff, but it's like, it's not deceiving. I, I just made a post on my Instagram today that it's like, uh, what was it? It was, uh, power and like influence is not or power and money is not a bad thing. Yep. And they're yep. told you, Oh, you have all this power. You have too much power. You have too much money. And it's like, they, they look at you Says like who? piece of shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but power of money is just like a fucking hammer. You can hit somebody in the fucking head with it or you can build someone a house, right? Yeah. So um, it, being able to take advantage of these these tactics mm. and communication and apply them and, and refine your sword on the phone mm. and at the doors, that's gonna re that's really where the fucking money's made because it doesn't matter what you do yep. to me. It doesn't matter what happens with the market. It doesn't matter what happens. I still have these skills and there's nothing you can do to take them away from me, yep. right? So it's like one, one thing that pops up into my mind is like Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Made the money. He did it dishonestly, right? Yeah. Everything was fucking stripped away from him. Gets out of jail. Where is he now? He's, yeah. Has tons of fucking money again. I'm selling mortgages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> but what's in his head, you can't fucking take that shit away, yeah. right? Yep. So he can use his powers and, and his ability and communication, tonality especially, because that's the thing he's. I think he's known for, to create such great things and help great people. But he can also be a shit bag and fucking screw yeah. people over. Yeah. Right. And, right. and we see it all the time in every industry all through life. So being able to use that and then like, I'm just saying now test your character while you do it, yep. knowing that you can take advantage of the old lady and put fucking 10% commission on the thing, but you put six and you do, you deliver more than you're being paid for. Yep. And you make them a raving fan because it's going to come back tenfold every time. Yep. So if you are the person and if you're listening to this and if you do think that you're a good person and you're not a piece of shit and if you can prove to yourself that you are that good person, yeah. you more than anyone else needs to take the shit seriously 
and work on yourself so you can help other people. Yep. Otherwise, you're doing a disservice not only to yourself and not only mm-hmm. are you going to feel like a piece of shit, but you can't help anyone. Yeah. Your whole fucking family, the people that you're going to come across, like they need your honest service. Because yep. there's too many dishonest business people out there that are scooping up business, making more money than you that aren't as honest and aren't as ethical. Yeah. Right. So like shitty business practices. Yeah. They're unethical people. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and at the end of the day, they're going to get what's coming to them, I believe. Right. Yeah. They're going to feel they're going to be a, a whole person by the time they die, but their bones are going to be hollow and they're going to be empty and they're going to feel like shit. Absolutely. Right. Man. So you can yeah. be fulfilled. You can yeah. make a lot of money, but you have to commit to the process and you have to do the things that aren't comfortable and that don't make you feel good because that's where the growth is. And like he mentioned, and I, I want to highlight this, like you provide opportunity for others too, like being able to help people. And it simply, all this power, money, what he's talking about in your development, all it does is amplify who you are. So right? It's exactly what you're Right, so doing. the scumbag that's screwing people over in business, he was a scumbag before he made money. Money didn't turn him into a scumbag. It just, on a world stage, showed you that he's a scumbag, magnifying right? Magnifying glass. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It magnified it, right? So I even think now, bro, like, like, like we joke, right? Like, and I remember last time, I think Brett came to my house and somebody's like, what the fuck, bro? You don't have the AC on? It's hot as fuck. I grew up without <laughs> AC, dude. And I make shit tons of money. I can afford to put a, I still don't put it on. You know what I mean? So I haven't changed. You know, he's like, so no he's, like he's like, what the fuck? He's like this little fan on right there. I'm like, yeah, that's all I need, bro. That's just the way I am. It's not like I suddenly got money. Oh, I'm too bougie now. And like, I don't forget the roots, but it's who I am. I didn't, I didn't make money and suddenly become a fucking prick or an yeah. asshole. You know what I mean? It's just, it amplifies who you are. So to his point, it would behoove you to, to, to follow this process because now you can do more better. And the more people that are good, that are doing better, that's how the world changes, right? But unfortunately, the reality that we live in, if you don't have money, what are you going to do? Right. Unless we all suddenly move out to the middle of nowhere and live in trees. You know what I mean? So there's there's people yeah. that always they they argue this point. I've had people argue this point. There was a guy at a seminar that I was at and he argued this point. He was like, oh, yeah, well, like um, it, it was I, I just lost my fucking train of thought. My mind's still spinning about the investment shit. Yeah, about the money, right? You went to an event and some dude was making the argument about that you don't need money or money. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he goes, he's like, yeah, dude, you don't, you don't need money to be a good person, right? And everyone (laughs) fucking, they got blue hair and they're like, you don't need money to be a better person. Down with the patriarchy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like, it's like, yeah, okay, you can donate your time, right? You can go make sandwiches for the fucking homeless, but it's like, let's let's be really honest here. Who's making a bigger impact? The, the person making, fuck, how many sandwiches can you make, right? Let's say you make 300 sandwiches, right? Are you making the impact or is it the person that owns the fucking building that has you making sandwiches for everyone else, right? Yeah. Or is it the person that is like yourself, right? Coaching all these fucking people to be the best that they can be and it's like a it's like a fucking tree that just blooms and everything will come off of it, right? Yeah, because yeah. the things that you've done for me and the way that you've helped me, I can now create myself and help other people in return. Right. And they're yeah. gonna help other people in return. Yeah. And like everyone wants the world to be a different place. Like that's how you fucking do it. Yeah. It starts with you and it starts with keeping your word. And it seems like yeah. it seems like that's so minuscule and small and that has nothing to do with anything, but that has everything yeah. to do with it. That's literally the seed where it starts. Yeah. You want right? to help the homeless, bro? How about you open up homeless shelters with your money? Yeah. But you're not in the position to do it. But you're going to play the moral police and say, well, and even then that argument is fallacious. Like who said you need money to be a good person, yeah. right? But they come up exactly. with all these statements. But again, it's always the people who don't have it or who haven't been on the side of having it that make that argument. Yeah. I was saying that earlier on my Instagram live. So when I tell you, talk to you guys about money and how it's not the only thing for happiness. I'm speaking from the position of having been broke as a fucking joke to having a shit ton of money and being in the top 1%. Mm-hmm. I can speak to you from a proper perspective. So when I say it's not all about money, it's different than that dude saying it's not all about money. Exactly. Right. But people have to be able to put all this emotional nonsense to the side and be able to objectively analyze what I just said for what it is from a factual standpoint, not an emotional standpoint. Yeah. Because yeah. all that's coming in is, well, that's wrong and that's right. But if we base it off what the consensus is of the majority and their morality, that changes, yeah. right? A yeah. hundred years ago, you, you, you were being hung if you were gay. Yeah. Now, now people want to be gay because it's cool, yeah. LGBTQ and all that, right? Yeah. A hundred years ago, they would have been erased, yeah. right? Same yeah. thing. You, you had a tan back in the day or you were black or Puerto Rican or Hispanic. 
right? You were a target. Oh, you can't come into the yeah. store because you're like, I remember seeing those signs, no Southern Italians, no fucking blacks, <laughs> no Puerto Ricans. Like, and I was like, holy shit. Can you imagine if you put that up now? You put that up, the cops are going to be called You get your ass kicked. But again, if we go with what the group says and their morality, kind of like that statement that that guy made, that can shift in 50 years. Yeah. What if that same blue haired punk is like, yes, you need to make money. It's like, dude, 50 years ago, right? Your child yeah. said the opposite. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. But people live wow. their lives based on that. So what we're sure. saying as we wrap this whole thing up is this is us self-creating and 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 really bringing to to fruition what we thought in our desire mm -hmm. you know and we could have potentially taken influence but it was a decision that we made and we said no i want to be this person boom i'm not going to let the outside dictate what i want to do and who i want to be i yeah. think it's kind of a good way to tie it together yeah right i mean i mean that's spot on it, it all starts with you no matter what way you slice it doesn't matter what you're doing it starts with you and and your responsibility and your commitment to your life because yeah. nobody, even if someone gave you money, you just piss it away, right? It's yeah. not. It's not about money. It's not. It's about like at the end of the day, like s people say, no, it's about being happy, right? It's fucking all of it, right? Yeah. And I've never seen someone broke a shit that's like happy as fuck, right? Yeah. So it's it starts with you, and it starts with the commitment. You know, ultimately. Yeah, and even the statement you just said, bro. It's like uh, even if you like, because I notice it too. Like I'll put out something on Instagram or YouTube that's that's a good message, and immediately the critiques come in. Well. Who are you to say that? Or it's not about that. It's about just being happy. It's like, dude, but the message of what I said, what does it have to do with your statement? You're just trying to find something negative or find something to critique. How they find the video. You're, exactly. you're watching that video if you want to fucking change. Exactly, right? So it's <laughs> if like, you want to be happy. But then again, right? that same person in that mindset, you bring them into real estate. This is the same person who nitpicks. I don't want to get help. I'm not going to pay for coaching. I'm not going to work hard. Uh, like the people, I think I told you, right? The people, when I was in my old real estate company, the audacity of the people, the emails that they would send, they would tag me and like other top sponsors at the company and be like, well, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking for, you know, the sponsor, uh, please tell me what you're going to offer me. And by the way, I refuse to cold call and door knock. And, and it's like, bro, it's like, you're a new licensee. Who the fuck are you to send that? Like, like, like uh, Wolf of Wall Street, you, who the fuck has the goddamn gall to, <laughs> to call this house on a Tuesday, Tuesday night, night, right? <laughs> Fucking half wit, right? Like, like, like really? But again, that person who emailed me, and I got a ton of emails like that, so I'm not yeah. bashing them, right? But that mentality is not going to be conducive to success in anything. Self-analysis. But we have to get to the, the thing. And, and what you said is we are so externalized here. When I say self-analysis, people don't even know what that means, bro, because they live through their phone. They don't even live in their yeah. reality anymore. They're watching you or me, and they live through us instead of saying, oh, shit, I'm in a shithole apartment. I've been here for three years, and nothing's changed. And I'm by myself. Yeah. And I'm barely making any money. Yeah. But, but the, so they'll drink or get lost watching you or me instead of working on themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So as we wrap up, last question. Mm -hmm. um, if you could give any tips for people, because that's something that you've picked up on that I've talked about a lot and you do it well, which is the self-analysis and making sure that you're you're being guided by your own compass. Do you have any tips for people in regards to improving that? Yeah. So. So you got to take emotion out of that type of stuff, right? Emotionally, you're going to have emotions. Emotions are going to be like fucking birds flying through the sky and they're going to continue to be there. It doesn't matter what state you're in or where you're at. Yeah. There's going to be things that, yep. and it's up to you if you want to take advantage of that thought or not, right? So understanding that and analyzing yourself in a way of like, all right, well, I want to become this and I'm here right now. Who do I need and, and what do I need to do to become that person, mm -hmm. right? And then as you're going through that journey, being able to analyze yourself like the person that you were saying that sent that email, why don't you want to cold call or door knock when you know and it's proven by not one person, by like tons of fucking people that that works. It works. And I just sent you a text like a few weeks ago about how like bootstrapping your business is the best thing I ever did because yep. my expenses are like six or 700 bucks a month yeah. and I can make 10, 20, 50 grand a month. Yeah off 600 bucks, yeah. it's because I cold call and I door knock. I don't pay for leads, right? And that's why I'm not working with a ton of fucking buyers either, thank God, right? Yeah, but, but you just said that the internet's gonna cancel you for yeah, hate speech. <laughs> no, no one's gonna hear this now, right? <laughs> fucking great. Um, that was pretty toxic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if I offended anybody here. Um, but analyzing yourself and like, all right, I don't wanna do this, but why? So start yeah. exploring those things and asking why, 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 why? And, Ask, you can ask yourself why 10 fucking times on the same topic hmm. of why you don't want to do something. 
And you're going to find out, like I said, especially if you're a man, that you're just being a little bitch and you just don't want to do this stuff, right? So it's yep. it's not about loving what you do, in my opinion. It really, it really isn't. That's a bonus thing and you'll end up loving what you do because you're growing as a person. It's the fulfillment and the yeah. progress. That's what makes you whole and mm -hmm. happy, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding that and taking everything from this episode that we kind of put out there and putting it all together and then asking yourself, why am I not doing these things? Why can't I follow my schedule? Why can't I, why do I let other people get in the way of me wanting to do this stuff? Mm -hmm. Because you end up changing all the normal ways of thinking where it's like, Oh, my mom needed to get picked up from the airport. Like I had to help her because I want to be a good person. And all right. Would, would you be a good person by helping get your mom or would you be a good person by, making the calls like you said you were going to do fucking last new year that you didn't do yeah. to where you would have, you know, 30 grand sitting in the bank account where you can call your mom an Uber. Yeah. You know, or you could afford the time to not make calls for an hour and go pick her up and do that. Yep. Right. It starts with you and your commitments. Yeah. And if, if you're not staying true to that, just yeah. fucking believe me when I say it, it only gets worse and it, it sucks. It, it really, really sucks. And if you haven't kept your word, I feel fucking sorry for you because it's a shitty ass feeling. Life's gonna suck even more. Yeah, and, and it gets worse by the day. It gets yeah. way worse. Yeah. Like if you think it's bad yeah. now, yeah. it gets fucking yeah. worse. And you know, one thing he brought up as we wrap up, you know, the whole loving thing, like loving what you do. I totally agree because when I did exactly what he said, and I was like, I want to get there, and I'm here. I realized, fuck, for me to get there, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of shit that I don't like. Yeah. So, well, I can't do it. Well, sorry, future self can't have you because I got to love what I do. Yeah. Right now in the process, I fell in love with it because of the person who I was becoming and who I became. Mm -hmm. That's where you fall in love with that process. And I wanted to highlight that because you're so right. Everybody fucking says it. But what is that? It's emotion. Really what they're saying is I want to feel good while I do this, but they won't admit it. Yeah. That's the fucking key, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's crazy. But we could talk all day about this shit. I'll have sure. Brett on again. <laughs> um, if people want to hit you up, chat. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Is it your Instagram, yeah. website? You yeah, know, do you so, have one of those cool stickers on your car? Like, call me, I'll sell your home yeah. for 1%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And big, big ass flags. There's a blimp actually that's going to come by your house. <laughs> no, um, Brett period Voorhees, V-O-O-R-H-E-E-S. And it's Brett Voorhees on Facebook. I'm pretty active on both of those, so that's normally where you can find me. Appreciate you coming on, bro. We'll, uh, sure. We're right at almost an hour, so that was fun. That flew. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.